Today, we are cracking open the engine of one of the most powerful data streaming platforms out there, Apache Kafka. We're going to dive deep and figure out what makes it so incredibly fast. Let's get right into it. So here's the big question, right? Why is Kafka so fast? Seriously, it handles a mind-boggling amount of data. It almost feels like magic. But I promise you, it's not magic. It's just some really, really clever engineering. And today, we're going to pull back that curtain and see exactly how it works. Okay, first things first. When we say Kafka is fast, we need to be really specific about what that means. We're not talking about low latency for a single tiny message. We're talking about high throughput, the ability to just shovel a massive volume of data from one place to another. The best way to picture it? Think of a giant water pipe. The goal isn't to make the water itself speed up, it's to make the pipe so wide that you can move a whole swimming pool's worth of water all at once. That's throughput. To understand how Kafka gets this incredible throughput, we have to start in a place that probably sounds completely wrong. The hard disk. Yeah, the slow spinning hard disk. This is where we find Kafka's first big secret weapon. It's total and complete reliance on something called sequential I.O. Now you've probably had this drilled into your head, right? Disk access is slow. It's like rule number one of performance engineering. But what if that's not the whole story? What if it's kind of a myth? Well, Kafka's design takes that common wisdom and just flips it on its head. You see, the secret is all about how you access that disk. With a traditional spinning hard drive, you've got this little mechanical arm that has to physically move to find data. If you're doing random access, jumping from here to there to over there, that poor arm is just frantically flying back and forth. That is what's painfully slow. But what if you could just do sequential access, where the arm just moves smoothly in one direction, reading or writing one continuous block of data? Well, that changes everything. And I mean, just look at how massive this difference is. The numbers are almost unbelievable. On modern hardware, sequential writes can blast along at 600 megabytes per second. But random writes? You'd be lucky to get 100 kilobytes per second. We are talking several orders of magnitude faster. This isn't just a small optimization. It's a completely different league. So how does Kafka guarantee it gets this super fast sequential access all the time? Well, its core data structure is brilliantly simple. The append only log. Every single new message is just added to the very end of a file. That's it. There's no complex logic, no jumping around to insert data, just a continuous sequential stream of writes. This simple idea lets Kafka treat that slow hard disk like a high-speed data highway. And this leads to a huge practical benefit. Since Kafka is built for sequential access, it doesn't need pricey solid-state drives to perform well. It runs beautifully on cheaper, much larger spinning hard drives. We're talking three times the storage for about a third of the cost. This is the very reason Kafka can afford to store data for days or weeks or even longer, a feature that was basically unheard of in messaging systems before it came along. Okay, so we've established Kafka can write to disk at lightning speed, but that's only half the battle. What about getting that data off the disk and out to a consumer on the network? This brings us to Kafka's second big secret, a true masterclass in efficiency called the zero copy principle. Let's look at the old, inefficient way data usually moves through a system. First, the data gets copied from the disk into the operating system's memory cache, okay? Then it's copied from there into the Kafka application's own memory. Then the application copies it again into something called a socket buffer, which is getting it ready for the network. And finally, it's copied one last time from that socket buffer to the network card. It's a lot. That's four, four separate copies of the same data, plus a bunch of back and forth between the operating system and the application. Every single one of those steps burns precious CPU cycles and memory bandwidth. It's just incredibly wasteful, especially when you're doing it millions of times a second. Now, check out how Kafka does it with zero copy. It's so much more elegant. The Kafka application makes a single, simple request to the operating system called send filing. This one command basically says, hey OS, you see that data in your cache? Just send it directly to the network card for me. We go from four copies down to one direct transfer. It's clean, simple, and brutally efficient. And believe it or not, it gets even better. This one final copy is often handled by a special piece of hardware magic called DMA, or direct memory access. This lets the network card itself pull the data directly from memory without bothering the CPU at all. The main processor is completely free to go and do other important work. It's the final optimization that makes Kafka's data pipeline just so incredibly efficient. So, let's bring this all home. We started out asking that big question, why is Kafka so fast? And now we've got the answer. 
It's not one single trick. It's a combination of two profoundly clever design choices working together. These really are the two cornerstones of Kafka's performance. First, it uses sequential I.O. with that append-only log to turn the supposedly slow disk into a massive, high-speed fire hose for data. And second, it uses the zero-copy principle to build an ultra-efficient pipeline from that disk straight to the network, cutting out all the waste along the way. When you think about it, Kafka's design teaches us a really powerful lesson. Sometimes, the biggest breakthroughs come from challenging the basic assumptions we all take for granted, like disk is slow. And that really leaves us with a final thought to chew on. What other obvious truths in the technology we use every day are just sitting there, waiting for someone with a clever idea to come along and turn them completely on their head?